But we've been talking about a lot of controversial issues so far today. And I'm going to go into another very controversial issue in just a second here. Uh, what we're going to talk about is the incident that's been happening. We've seen it several times now across the nation. And that is, is it all right when we're talking about history, when we're talking about the history of the nation, uh, we're talking about things like slavery, which is a hot button issue. No one wants to really discuss that. And part of that is how do you discuss slavery? How do you let younger students understand what was slavery? How did it have an impact? How did it exist? How did it function? And we can't show Roots on TV anymore, sadly, for some reason. I don't know why. But it's bad for TV. It's bad TV. It's too violent. It's too all kinds of emotions. And it probably breaks a bunch of PC regulations. It's not politically correct, although it's accurate and it's important. And we should talk about it. And we should have that on TV. And why it was so groundbreaking in the 70s when it was on national TV and actually moved forward the discussion about race and racism and, and slavery and the past of the nation and where it is today and Jim Crow, all very important issues that we should talk about and we should have some viewpoint on as a nation. But instead, we don't. And so there are teachers throughout the nation, and this has been happening for a while now, and I'm just pulling out a couple of issues uh, back in 2017, there was a teacher in New Jersey, in Maplewood, New Jersey. Uh, and this is an article from the CBS Channel 2, WLNY, in uh, CBS New York, talking about the Maplewood Elementary School. The article is actually from March 20th of 2017, where a mock slave auction Stokes tempers at Maplewood Elementary School. And very simply, in this article, uh, we see that there was a teacher, a substitute teacher, who was going in and they wanted to teach about slavery. And their choice and their decision was to have a mock uh, slavery auction where white students were bidding on and, uh, and mock buying black students. And everyone was outraged. It was horrendous. The teacher got fired. Um, and, and, and then they had a bunch of uh, conversations with the kids because they were somehow emotionally destroyed for the rest of their lives because of this, or at least that's what was alleged. And here we are. Let's go into 2019. And in 2019, we again see this time in Watertown, New York. And according to Spectrum News, and they're reporting on this as of May 31st, yesterday, Friday, um, that a Watertown teacher was placed on leave after an alleged mock slave auction, where once again, a teacher went out and said, hey, we're going to have these black students and they are going to be bought by slaves, by by the white students, and those and those slave children would have to refer to the white children as master X Y Z, whatever the last name was, and this is what slavery encompassed. This is what it really was like. This is a, a minuscule impact of what slavery was, and people are losing their minds. They are they are losing their minds about this. And I have to say, why? Why is it such a big deal? Why is it so horrible? Why is it so horrendous to teach children about what happened? Because the question is, isn't, did slavery exist? It did. We know that. And it's not that it was a bad thing. We know that too. We agree on that. Okay. Why is it bad to give these kids the touch, just a... a, a a taste, the smallest, most innocuous taste of this is how horrible this was. This is how demeaning it was. This is how, uh, how it devalued people and how it took away from people's lives. It's a lesson. Why is it wrong? 
Because I'm hearing a lot of people and they're saying it boggles their mind that they feel like it was horrible, that this was a terrible thing to do to kids in fourth and fifth grade. Why? What is wrong? I understand it's a difficult subject and, and difficult subjects need to be addressed. And maybe they should be addressed with seventh and eighth graders or kids in high school. Okay, but again, it comes down to this is real. It happened. In fact, slavery happens right now. It's happening in Africa as we speak. There are several nations in Africa where we have uh, those of a Muslim faith do sell and buy others. Uh, I believe it was Boko Haram, one of the fanatical Islamist groups, does buy and sell slaves. So we have slavery real in the world at this moment. And we're talking about a real and historical fact in the United States. And why is this bad? Because we're telling kids that at one point in history, this is how one group treated another group and it was wrong. And it felt wrong. And doesn't this feel bad? Because that kid's going to be damaged for life? Really? Why? You gave them a lesson. It's a lesson they may not like. But then again, there are a lot of lessons in life that we don't like. Is it bad? And, and I'm, when I look at this, um, and here's one of the art, and I'm going back to the Spectrum News article about this over in Watertown, and we see that the Onondaga County NAACP, that they made a comment on this, okay? And their statement is, there, there shouldn't be a soul in the universe that should be saying, well, maybe it's okay. It wasn't okay. It wasn't okay during slavery times. It's, it isn't okay now. There shouldn't be anyone on the fence. Make no mistake about it. Well, I, I'm sorry. Why? Again, I come back to the question, why? Yes, yes, in America, because it's not universal, because it's existing today, it's happening right now in the world. Slavery does still exist, but in the United States, it does not. And that's a good thing, because we remember what slavery was. We remember why we fought against it. We remember these things, and, and in discussing it, we prevent it from happening again. But why should no one be having a conversation? Why is it not okay to go through with that? Was it because, it would have been better? Would it be okay if black students were buying white students and doing everything exactly the same except it was a black student buying a white student? Would that make it okay? Does that change anything? No, I, I don't believe it does. I don't think there's a difference here. The question is, it doesn't make those black students or those white students inferior or superior to anyone. There is no difference here. It doesn't change anything. If we are saying, here is an example of why this is so bad. And if this feels bad to you just a little bit right now, imagine if that was a lifetime and everyone was doing that. This is why it's bad. That's a, le that's a teaching moment. That's a learning moment. That's a lesson that we all can grow from. But instead, we're told, and again, we're being told it's bad, it's wrong, it shouldn't be happening. But we're not being told, why is it bad? Why shouldn't it be happening? Why can you not do that? Why can we not reenact this to make the point? And here's the key question. To make the point that this was wrong. And every indication, in, whether it was in Maplewood, New Jersey, or if it's in uh, Watertown, New York, or anywhere, I would think, if it's, if it's being presented as in, this is wrong, and this is why this is wrong, this is what happened, and this is why it's wrong, then what's the problem? I don't understand. And people say, well, Mike, you just don't get it because you're not black. Um, if you're looking at me, if you're not hearing this on the audio, if you're uh, if you're actually seeing the video, I think that answers itself right there. But for those who are listening to just the audio, yeah, I'm a black Hispanic. I am 
very much a black Hispanic. It's very obvious. Yeah, I'm black. And I'm asking the question, why is this wrong? If it's being presented, and it appears that it is, as a lesson in history and with an example of why this is wrong. Why is it wrong? Oh, you can't do that. You should never do that. Why? Why shouldn't we do that? All we're being told is you can't do it. Why? What's so wrong? Why have we made our kids so delicate that even giving them this example somehow destroys their lives? Nothing. There should be no way that we could destroy their lives. Can we not talk about the Holocaust? Now, what, and I suppose the argument can be made, well, you could do the same thing with the Holocaust and make one group of kids Germans and the other group of kids Jews. And you could, but it doesn't transfer exactly the same way. Although, I would say, if you could make it reasonably the same in the same kind of enactment that, you know, this group of students are being subjugated and these group of students are the ones doing it and this is wrong, then, yeah, I'd be for that too. I don't have a problem with that. I don't see the problem with having a discussion where we're saying this is something that has happened in history and it is wrong. And it has hurt people. And here is an example of that hurt. And this is, some, this is the reason why we don't do that. Why we don't condone that. Why it's wrong to do that. And why we fight against it. But just to tell me no. Just to tell someone no, you can't do that. You can't do that because we say so. Well, there is no difference in just mandating an answer. I have no, you don't grow from that. You don't learn from that. Oh, we just can't talk about that. That doesn't mean it's wrong. It means that it's forbidden. That just means that you don't get to learn. You don't get to expand. You don't get to grow. And that's a problem. When people don't get to have to ask that question, why is that wrong? And get an answer, a real, honest, non-manipulative answer of why is that wrong? If you don't do that, then they will repeat. That is, you're not telling history. You're not explaining history. And I don't mean rewriting history, which we hear a lot of. But if we're not being accurate and saying this is what happened, this is why it happened, and this is why it is wrong, then you will inevitably repeat that process. And we've already gone into, we've started that already. I mean, when you're talking about safe spaces and, and isolating people because, well, you know, black students can go over here, but whites aren't allowed. Or that's, that's segregation. Even though it's voluntary segregation, it is still segregation. It is a step backwards in time. It is a step back towards this Jim Crow era mentality. When we start categorizing people with the micro categories that we see that's very predominant in Democrat socialist ideology, that we hear from people who have gender identity politics where they categorize people, well, you're a straight male or you're a straight woman, you're black male or gay or you're transgender and you're this race and you're that. When you start micro-categorizing people like that, there is no difference between that and segregation. There is no difference, in my mind at least, between that and what that slippery slope that starts going back towards Jim Crow laws that goes back towards slavery. And maybe it's not a physical slavery, but it's still an emotional slavery. It's still, it can be an economic slavery. It is definitely devaluing certain human beings and elevating other human beings on arbitrary basis because of someone's political preference because they're in power and they want it to be that way. And if you don't discuss it, then that's just the way it is. And that has always historically led to violence and upheaval and, and people being downtrodden and, and losing their rights. Do I think that it, it was it the most tasteful way of discussing slavery? Probably not. Probably not. You probably could have done it a lot more tastefully and, or, or more imaginatively. But is it 
a horror? Should we fire everyone involved? Do we need to have sensitivity training for the students because of this? No. No, you really don't. You're, you're, you're making something out of nothing. This is very simple. This is a very simple thing that can be resolved and explained to the students. And if we don't try and over sensationalize this, if we're not treating the kids like they're morons, and if we actually give them an answer besides you can't do that, or that you 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 must be damaged for life. Well, again, this is about victimhood. These kids are damaged for life. We have destroyed them for life because we have given them an example of history. We have given them a factual, real experience of history. And hopefully, and as from every indication, they were given at the same time an answer of why this is wrong. Because it, from what I can understand in the lesson plan, and this is the important thing, which isn't absolutely clear, but if at the same time they were being given the answer that this is wrong, here is why, then what is the problem? What, these kids are going to be damaged for life? Are you kidding me? If this is going to damage them for lives, if they are victims now, then they are done. They will never succeed. They're going to have problems throughout life. If that is all it takes to destroy their lives, then they were never going to make it in the first place. Life is difficult. There are problems. People don't agree. It's not nice. If this is all it takes, if, if just this one moment is destroying your life, then you have a problem, Snowflake. You, you are far too fragile. And something is inherently wrong with what's going on with you. That's my opinion. Now again, people may disagree. And I really would love to hear what others think about this. And I would like to hear why is it wrong. Not it's wrong so don't speak about it. I want to hear why is it wrong. What specifically about this is wrong? Because we're not hearing that in the news. What specifically makes it wrong if the intent is to teach why this incident that happened in fact and is wrong. I mean, we, we really need to address that. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just not sensitive enough or that other people are way too sensitive. I don't understand. But I think we need to have that discussion because without it, we're, we're going into a dangerous place of censoring what can and cannot be said about fact, about history. And it's like someone denying the Holocaust existed. And given enough time, if we can't talk about slavery, people will deny that slavery existed. And the easiest way for a Holocaust or for slavery to come back is to not talk about it existing in the first place. And that will allow people to do it again. That's just a reality, I believe. But that's my point of view. All right, so we're going to take another quick break, and then we'll be right back in just a moment. 